everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we have a, another devlog for the upcoming crafting event in War Thunder, and this is for the XM8 AGS. This is going to be a new light tank which is coming to America, and is going to be a rank 6 vehicle. It isn't going to get premium, um, so this is just going to be a straight event vehicle from the crafting event, and also, I believe, completes the lineup for the crafting event. Normally we have 4 vehicles in total, and this is the last one. Now, at least when it comes to this, I think it definitely offers an interesting vehicle for the Americans. Uh, we've seen a lot of event vehicles for America over the last few years with all the Macavas, the M60 A and B T, but this is the first one which um, is, you know, a light vehicle which should be quite mobile and also has different levels of armor, which I think is actually really cool. Uh, since there were so many different variants of the XM8 AGS, uh, since they've gone for this. Uh, different modification layouts, I actually think it's uh, pretty awesome instead of just splitting them into different vehicles. Hopefully soon, over the next few days, we find out how this crafting event is going to be set up, and then we'll be able to see how to get this vehicle. Anyway, let's get into the history of the XM8 AGS. Development of the XM8 AGS began in June of 1992, when the FMC company was awarded a contract to develop a new light tank to replace the Sheridan, which had been in service with the US Army since the late 60s. In addition to keeping the vehicle lightweight, FMC also used available parts from other vehicles in service at the time, such as the Bradley and the Abrams. This was to try and unify production, uh, therefore reducing costs and also simplify logistics for the vehicle itself. And by May of 1994, the Army received six prototypes which were all extensively tested into 1997. And then there was actually plans of production put forward for the XM8 AGS, but instead what had actually happened um, is the funding for that was diverted to other projects, such as the M1128 Striker, which we have in game right now. This ultimately resulted in the cancellation of serial production for the vehicle, and work on the XM8 continued though, with further developed versions being subsequently offered on the export market, Market, but so far have been unsuccessful. The actual uh, vehicle itself is still uh, going around, there's still a few government contracts designed for it, one going into actually 2022 with a whole new system. So we'll see after this uh, vehicle being in development hell for so long if it will eventually come to light, not just as a prototype. So now with the XM8 officially announced, we can actually have a look at which variants they have decided to put into the game. And it looks like they've mixed two ideas, uh, which obviously the XM8 has uh, been able to, you know, have over time. Pretty much the idea of it, just like a lot of other vehicles, it is it has different levels of armor for different situations. So you have the level one based of armor, and this was designed so it could be airdropped, the level 2 base of armor is so it would be able to be transported quickly to areas, and level 3 was for extended engagements in said areas. So in game, we're getting the level 1 and the level 3 versions of the armor. So the extreme light version, which was designed to be airdropped, so without all of the extra armor that you see in the pictures, and then we're getting the level 3 one, which gives it a ton of extra, of extra armor on the sides of the machine and also on the upper glacis. Basically, uh, what it adds is additional composite screens onto the vehicle, which enhances its protection. But the problem is the mobility of the machine will really struggle. And uh, the level one one will offer a lot less protection than these composite screens, 
but also way better mobility. And the mobility on this vehicle is found from the 550 horsepower diesel engine. This can give the vehicle up to 72 kilometers an hour. And to be honest with you, I thought this vehicle would be a bit faster. We'll have to see what its low end acceleration is like. Obviously that's very useful for light tanks uh, to get around the battlefield. And uh, the 72 kilometers an hour, as long as you can get up to it quickly, you know, as long as you can get up to that 40 or 50 mark which you know at high tiers a lot of stuff gets a lot faster mbts are generally very fast and very quick and being able to move around therefore the light tanks which support them will also have to be there as well the uh, other thing to mention is the main armament on this machine is the 105 millimeter xm35 rifled cannon this should be an incredible powerful gun having access to all of the ammunition that you all know and love apfs ds is always going to be a big one uh, you know uh, heat as well i'm sure it'll have hopefully this thing doesn't get stock heat fs um one of the trends that we've seen at high tiers recently is a lot of vehicles getting stock heat fs with the apfs ds either being a rank one or rank four modification making it harder to be able to actually stock grind the vehicle and since light tanks already suffer from not being as combat effective as medium tanks in a straight on fight it would be nice if this thing at least got a decent round at the start when it comes to optics and stuff like that i haven't actually found too many sources about it so i don't know whether this thing is going to have thermals i don't know whether it'll just have mvds i do uh, believe it will have a laser rangefinder though uh, so that means that you know uh, going into targets and stuff like that should be a lot easier it also has at least a 50 cal machine gun on the top which will give it that extra support you know to be able to either knock tracks or take out aircraft and it also has a coaxial gun as well to be able to keep it going but generally when i look at this machine what I see is a machine that people are going to run light. I don't think anybody's going to really run the level 3 package. Just because if you have a look at it, there's so many gaps in the armor um, that it actually has. The lower Glacix looks incredibly juicy. Then you can uh, actually get around into the lower turret of this machine through the sides. There isn't enough armor on it to be able to cover even the tracks or anything like that. And it also has a huge booty that you'll be able to take out. Out. One of the things that may benefit this um, benefit this machine quite a lot is the pressure changes um, that they're bringing in. Remember, they're actually going to replace hull brake with a new mechanic, a pressure mechanic, and uh, this is going to affect a lot of vehicles, especially light vehicles, since they're the ones which are mainly affected by hull brake. And if this thing has all of the armor on it, you know the composite screens, maybe that will help it against. Uh, the pressure mechanic but then again the APFS DS that many vehicles are firing should go straight through this and not really bother about the composite screen we're gonna have to see what the armor values of it are um, just uh, you know going forward uh, with the machine and um, before we can really make a judgment on that but since this is a light tank and it's designed to be light I don't think it's going to be that hefty at uh, defending itself there was also a 120 version of this with an autoloader I think that would actually be really cool to see um, maybe we see that as a premium or maybe we see that as a standard tech tree vehicle we'll have to see going forward and the only thing left now is to see if we can or to see how this crafting event is going to be set up my guess is <clears throat> this crafting event is designed to start on the first um since that's when it was uh, beginning last year and also the thing is last year you were only able to get half of the prizes you could only get two out of the four so it might come to a point even though i disagree with not being able to get all of the prizes it may come to a point where you have to choose between this and also the f4f and because of that uh, a lot of people might not get this vehicle you know the f4f is going to be very highly sought after by a lot of people from germany and uh, also a lot of people who enjoy playing germany and the xm8 i mean there are a ton of different options already for the americans with a bunch of different event vehicles and a bunch of different light tanks at, 
at high tiers. Do you really need another one? Does it give anything properly special to a separate lineup? And that's something we're going to have to see going forward. Or will it be another VFM5 scenario where you hardly ever see them on the battlefield and at the same time they uh, they don't really do a lot, uh, mainly because of their modification costs, and luckily their research got reduced, so there's also that for it. I'm looking forward to this vehicle uh, for many different reasons. I really like um, light tanks in general. I think they're really fun to play. Um, I really hope it does find a place in the game uh, as a pretty useful vehicle. I just hope that there is a reason to take different levels of armor package instead of one being dominant over the other. But so far, when we look at other vehicles that have the same ideas, um, there's normally just a very specific choice that you go for. And I really hope we can get all of these prizes this time. Otherwise, it's going to be very frustrating. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to say the same thing. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Teddy, John Ryman, Universe A, Conte Baraka, Trigger Hippie, Eugens Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez B. Young, Hosest Cachot, Hans, Barine, and Samuel Schlick for supporting the channel.